Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador. Today's project is an exciting project. I'm introducing you to a brand new transfer. This is a beautiful transfer from the Bells and Whistles line called Roses Are Red. And it is kind of special to me because I was a key component in designing this piece of art. I absolutely love it and I hope that you will love it too. Make sure you stay tuned to the end to see the final product. So what's inside the Roses Are Red transfer? Well, I'm going to show you piece by piece. Think of this transfer as roses are red, heavily Alice inspired, but a little bit dark. There's vintage playing cards, there's beautiful deep red roses, there's gilded crowns, all the things that you need to take your piece to the next level. So for today's project, we are actually going to be painting over a piece that I have previously done. I painted this cute little buffet in cucumber ice for a product release. I love it, but it's not yet totally me. We need to kind of fancy it up some. So we are going to go heavy Alice in Wonderland on this cute little Bombay style buffet. So since I know what is on this buffet, since it was me that painted it, it's only chalk mineral paint, which means I can jump right in and paint over top. I did not seal this piece when I painted it. It was a showcase piece for the brand new Cottage Collection color release. I jumped right in with cotton. Cotton is just a plain, beautiful white from the chalk mineral paint line. I applied two even coats over top of the top drawer only. My plan for this piece is Heavy Alice, remember? Heavy Alice in Wonderland inspired. So that tells me stripes, that tells me color, bold red roses. So this top drawer is going to be completely striped. So on the top of this piece, you can see that there was sort of a indent panel. When I purchased this piece off of Facebook Marketplace, it was just completely manufactured wood. So this top piece has a small indent and some edges that I want to cover. This is where I'll be using my Dixie Bells mud to fill in those cracks and lines. The reason why I am doing this is because I want a smooth surface. So by applying my mud in this manner, covering those cracks, those lines, and then sanding them back to perfectly flat, I will be left with a beautiful smooth finish for me to paint over, add transfers, whatever I wish. I often use this product to fix any veneer issues little scratches in the wood. I even use this to fill holes for hardware where I want to replace the original hardware on a piece. I use this product a lot. You have a couple options when it comes to Dixie Belle mud. After you sand it back to flat, you can use your boss to seal it and make sure that it's going to stay nice and strong, or you can just paint right over top of it. I think that this is one of those things that you need in your toolbox, especially if you're a new painter and you're getting into furniture painting. So. Just think about Dixie Belle Mud as your go-to product for prep before you paint a piece. So now that the top drawer has dried completely, I'm going to grab my painter's tape. I'm going to add stripes to the front of this drawer. My handy dandy tip for you today is to start in the middle. I like to start directly in the middle so I get a balanced look of stripes. If I started on one side and moved over, they're going to be unbalanced because depending on the tape you use, it never really measures up. So using an extra piece of tape, I laid out my pattern and put that painter's tape down. Then I came back in with the original color, which is cotton. This way I'm going to cover those masking tape lines. So when I peel this tape off, they will be beautiful and clean. I then used my silk paint and anchor for nice black and white stripes. All right, let's get ready to add some Would You Bend moldings. These Would You Bend moldings are under tools on the Dixie Belle paint page. They come in a set of two. The measurements worked well, but they were just a little bit too long on one side. So I removed one small scroll and painted them completely in gold gilding wax. You can do this before you apply them or after you apply them. 
So what's the plan? <laughs> The plan is I can't make up my mind. So I know that I want this top drawer striped, which I've already done. We have a beautiful cotton and we have our gorgeous black. We have anchor for black here. This is easy. This part is easy. I know I'm going to be putting these Would You Bend moldings on here somewhere and probably the playing cards from the transfer. So what's the plan, we ask, for the base of the piece? I can't decide. You can come over here, puppy dog. She cannot come over here because there's things on the floor. Every time I sit on the floor and talk to myself or talk to you guys, my dogs come in here and think that I'm like free game for sitting on the floor. Hello, Stella. No heavy breathing in the mic. <laughs> so I can't make up my mind what I want to do for this piece. Whenever I think Mad Hatter, I think purple, right? So I grab two purples, aubergine, lucky lavender. I'm like, okay, that would be fabulous. I can do like an ombre blend. But then I was like, but what about green? I could do green. I could do green on this piece, right, Stella? But then I was like, do I want to do green? Is it too much contrast with the red? So I don't know, sometimes this happens. I think I'm gonna start purple and maybe I'll make my way up and do a little bit of green on the edges or something. But I also grabbed the Moonshine Metallics and the Harlequin stencil. My little old brain is just much too excited for what I have to do for this piece. I love the Bombay style chest. I love the Mad Hatter look. I love this transfer. So the sky's the limit. I think I just have to go get one more transfer and just do this in multiple colors because what other excuse do I have? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get another transfer and I'm gonna do one piece in purple and one piece in green. Then we can decide what we like better, right? Let's get painting. These drawers actually don't come out of the piece. So I just taped off my top drawer so I wouldn't make a big mess. Starting with aubergine into Lucky Lavender, I ended up blending a tiny bit of cotton into that drawer in the middle. I want kind of like a faded ombre blend and you're gonna have to mix a bunch of colors together. For this, I will use my Bestang brush. So I faded up those three colors, the Lucky Lavender, the Aubergine, and then Cotton, and I kind of brought it from dark to light, starting at the base and moving up. I recommend keeping a separate brush for each color that you're using. This way you won't muddy up the colors when you're applying them to different parts of the piece. I do love my Best Dang brush for ombre blending. It kind of helps me smoke out those colors and get an easy ombre blend. This piece is not overly large, so working in sections, I like to work on like the side, then the front, then the other side, keeps it a little bit more manageable. Make sure to use a spray misting bottle filled with water to keep your brushes damp. This will help you blend the colors together as well. And since I already had a base of chalk mineral paint, remember this is painted in cucumber ice, I really only did one coat of the purple colors in an ombre blend on top.
When using your best dang brush, it's helpful to keep it a little bit damp. This is a heavy brush. It's natural fibers and synthetic fibers. You'll also see me wiping it off on a rag on the floor below me. This kind of gets rid of the product that sits inside the bristles. So work in sections, bring the color up, use that ombre blend with your best dang brush to really make a seamless transition. You'll see me here going back and forth with my two brushes, kind of like the old school way of doing my ombre blends, just to really make sure that, that it faded out and disappeared. Keeping those brushes damp, moving back and forth, and pulling those colors together. I came in with a Harlequin stencil and added kind of like a faded stencil pattern to the front. This is going to be a great base for the transfer since I'll be adding the giant red roses. So I used the Harlequin stencil and my Best Dang brush along with Moonshine Metallics in Gold Digger. It's kind of a random pattern and I find that if you keep a random pattern underneath layering with stencils or transfers, it looks a little bit more organic and natural. So here I'm just kind of cleaning up any little ends of the Moonshine Metallic from when I put it up onto the piece. When it comes to stenciling, you want to think about less is more. Go really light-handed, use only the tiniest bit of paint and really kind of move it around. Using the Best Dang brush for this project is very helpful. It's a nice flat surface and I'm able to really concentrate on the small little Harlequin uh, diamonds where I want them to be. And remember, Moonshine Metallics is actually a thinner paint. The Metallics line kind of is like a buildable layer of a, of a paint. It comes out a little bit thinner than regular chalk mineral paint. So it's almost like this is a ghost stencil. It's not really full coverage when you see me applying it like this. I'm just kind of gently shadowing in the Harlequin stencil. You know, it's it's kind of funny when I rewatch these videos and I'm making videos for you here on YouTube because I spend a lot of time sitting on the floor looking at my piece. I sit back, I take my camera out, I take pictures. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you don't catch, but this is basically me just sitting on the floor deciding if I like what I did. I repeated this kind of faded stencil pattern, more heavy on the base, moving up into a lighter value on both sides of the project. Then it was time to work on the top of this piece. I got out my surf prep sander. My surf prep sander is amazing. I work inside my home, so having a dust-free sander is super duper helpful. And I simply just sanded down that mud to flat. This is going to give me a nice smooth base ready for my Harlequin stencil that I'm going to do on the top. Coming in with cotton once again as a base for the top piece of this little Bombay chest. I'm going to paint it completely in white. What this is going to do is give me a base for a Harlequin stencil that I will design with masking tape.
you can see me go over that mud like it totally isn't even there. It just disappears. I absolutely love Dixie Belle mud for that really super flat finish that you can get under paint. My cotton paint is actually kind of old. <laughs> it's a little chunky, but I seem to have a problem closing lids well. It's still usable. If you find that your paint gets a little bit um, thicker in value, all you need to do is add a little bit more water and it will work just fine. White in general tends to get a little bit chunkier than the other paints quicker. I don't know why, but that's what I've learned. So I did one even coat fairly heavy-handed using my spray misting bottle filled with water as a base for the top of this project. So after the top part is dry, you're ready to add transfers over top. You don't need to seal before you add transfers unless you are using terra clay paint because that paint is definitely porous. So if you're using chalk mineral paint or silk paint, you can put transfers right over top. So let's lay out our pattern. This to me is kind of the fun part. I get out my masking tape and I lay out my pattern for my transfers. It kind of gives me a better idea of planning rather than just jumping right in. So my plan for this is to go heavy with the roses on the base and then move up towards the playing cards on the top drawer. These transfers are super heavy and super easy to apply. You can see how when I lay down my roses, you don't see what's underneath. So they're nice and thick and beautiful for making layering patterns on a piece. Deciding where the roses are going to sit so I have an even balance, I actually used almost 100% of this transfer. I think I was only missing one small little piece. So when you see this piece in design, it's the entire package. The entire flat package of transfers that you see is on this piece. If you don't know about transfers and there might be some beginners watching this video, let me explain to you a little bit about how to apply them. When you open up your package, you have your sheets inside. This transfer has four sheets. What's going to happen is you're going to cut up the images that you would like to use, peel off the white backing, and then you're left with the image stuck on a clear packaging. You then take that image that's on the clear packaging and adhere it to your piece. Here's your handy dandy tip of the day. Don't move your transfer around once you've put it onto your piece. There's a sticky backing on the image. So behind the image is that stick factor that allows you to adhere it to your piece. So now that your image is onto your project, you're going to take that small burnishing tool. You're going to get a tool inside of every package that you buy. I keep a lot of them. That's why you see me using a brown one. Inside this package is a light brown one with the Dixie Belle emblem. You're then going to lightly burnish your image down onto the piece while peeling off that clear paper. You'll see me here using a sharp knife. I like to put my images down and then cut them. You can also cut them while you have the backing paper on as well. Either way works, but for me, I find I get a cleaner, clean cut edge onto my transfer. So put the image right over top of your drawer and then cut it with a sharp knife. Transfers are designed to be layered. You can decide with this package how you want to lay out your pattern. I really designed this transfer so that you could use multiple parts on different pieces. 
I'm a big believer in buying one transfer and getting a lot of projects out of it. But for this piece, I really wanted like a powerful design. So the entire transfer is on one piece and it all matches according to color. I'm just laying the roses down right over top of that faded stencil design and just not touching that top drawer. The top drawer is going to be almost like a separate entity on the piece. I just want the roses and the color on the base working separately with the vintage playing cards. Use your tool gently to scrape down the edges. I tend to go around the outside edge of the entire image. This allows me to make sure that the edges are stuck down. Sometimes you'll see me use my fingernail if I get in really close to a corner. But once you get those edges adhered, it's very simple to just pull back that paper and leave the image on your piece. You can then smooth it gently with your hand to make sure there's no air bubbles. Some of these roses are as big as my hand, so you wanna make sure to push out any air bubbles that you might have underneath your transfer. After you get all of your images onto your piece, you can seal your project. You have a couple of different options when it comes to sealing. You can use clear coat, you can use matte, flat, or gloss, it's up to you. You can also use wax. For this project, I will be using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin for a nice satin finish and to ensure that my images are protected on the piece. Transfers can be bent around corners as well. In this part of the video, you'll see me working over top of the edge of the dresser. I like to work in sections, so I'll get one section completely flat and then make sure that the bent part is pushed down and work across the bend to the top surface. After measuring out exactly where the center of the dresser was, I created two Harlequin diamonds on the top of the piece, sealing the edges with cotton before I came in with that beautiful anchor to create a giant Harlequin pattern on the top. And then once that was dry, I'm going to be applying one of the bigger flower images directly on the points where the color meets. You might find it easier to work with transfers on a nice big flat surface or pushing down from the top rather than the side. I see many people turning their pieces of furniture onto their side so that they can lay a larger image across the front. Whatever works for you. For me, I just find using painter's tape to adhere my plan out before I start is probably as far as I'll go. But I will say working on a large flat surface, working downwards in a motion rather than kind of vertically is always helpful. I worked on that top front drawer with my playing cards, bending them around the corners. You can either bend them around and adhere them to the sides of the drawer or just cut them so that they fit. Either way works. I wanted to kind of make this drawer a little bit different than the rest of the piece. Let's talk a little bit about would you bend moldings. So would you bend moldings come rigid and hard in the package and you're able to heat up the backing and then bend them around surfaces. You'll see that the front of this Bombay chest is not completely flat. That is why I am heating it up very well before I apply it to my piece. So using my heat gun and making sure that the back of the would you bend molding is completely warm allows me to bend it and mold it to the front of the dresser. See how bendy it becomes? I'm going to use this as a cornerstone for each of the drawer fronts on the bottom drawer. It's always recommended to use wood glue when you're applying your wood you bend moldings because these moldings are actually made from wood. You can adhere them before you do transfers or after transfers, but you'll really see the look that I'm going for with the bright gold over top of the beautiful red roses. I 
I actually overlapped the moldings so that when the drawers close, they kind of come in over top of the edge. Make sure to space out your hardware, uh, knowing that you have to have room for your hardware on your piece is important as well. And then heating one more time once your piece is on there to ensure that it's molded directly to the bendy edge on your project. I like to use clamps to hold my bendy would you bend on there until it's dry so that it holds its shape. For this piece, I ended up using recycled hardware. I save every little bit of hardware that I get from every project. So I just so happened to have four of these pieces. I really wanted to brighten them up. All I did was apply gold gilding wax over top of the original finish, and this will give me a bright gold shine. I find that this works better than spray paint and leaves a more authentic kind of a vintage look. Once the gold gilding wax is on your piece, you can wait for it to get dry and buff it back, or you can just leave it as is. I left it as is for a nice heavy coverage, and then once you put it back on your piece, you're good to go. This is an oil-based product, so you don't have to seal it. Using my favorite blue sponge, I dampened it with water and applied my clear coat. I'm using satin, which looks a little bit milky in this photo, but it dries completely clear. If you overlap your strokes a little bit when you're applying this to the top of your project, you'll end up with a really pretty seamless finish. So keep that sponge damp and overlap your strokes and you should be fine. I covered the entire piece in clear coat in satin. While this is drying, I decided to add one more tiny would you bend molding in the shape of a keyhole on the top drawer, and I was finished. After the clear coat had dried, I added a touch of black wax to the corners, and she was ready. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece of furniture. The Bombay style accents this transfer wonderfully. I staged this piece in kind of a heavy romantic vibe. I used oversized keys and petals from flowers and I absolutely love it. What do you think of the new Roses is Red transfer? Drop it in the comments below and let me know what you're going to use this transfer on. Thank you for joining me on my painting journey. I hope you loved it as much as I do. Don't forget to like and subscribe for new weekly videos.